Hey, Coach Justin, I'm back here to talk about paperwork. All right, we've gone through the script here, the seller framework, the call framework, and we, we got a hot one. All right, we're down, to, <laughs> we're down to number 16, and we're going to need to now get out the paperwork and go over the paperwork with the homeowner. We're going to need to know how to fill in all the blanks that we have to fill in on the paperwork and we're going to need to send it over to them for signatures. You're going to want to use a program like dot loop or DocuSign. I use dot loop. I uh, recommended that earlier in the course, but um, you can use DocuSign or hello sign, or there's a, a whole bunch of others you could use. And they're all about the same or what, what have you. I recommend you test it out before you send it to a seller though. Okay. Test it out and make sure that it's not going to ask the seller to sign up for an account before they get to look at the document and uh you know because they won't they won't sign up for nobody's account like it's some kind of a weird scam and you're trying to recruit people to sign up for your account over there uh, at your new platform or that you work for and this is just a scam or something so they won't do it so test this stuff out okay Let's talk about the paperwork. And I want you to get comfortable again with paperwork. Again, we're one-on-one -on -one here, just me and you talking, because paperwork can be a little bit of one of those things that make you nervous, right? Totally can be. This here is the agreement that's in the module. This is the residential lease and option to purchase agreement. And you can see it's pretty short. It's only about a page and a half long. It's two pages total here, but it's only about a page and a half, really. And uh, you can see it's just pretty easy to fill in the blanks here to see where you need to fill in blanks. So the tenant buyer is going to be you, okay? And you can see here it says and or assigns. So we're already setting this up to be an assignment, okay? That's what we're doing. We're lease option wholesaling, okay? The landlord seller, that's going to be the homeowner. The property location, that's just going to be the address of the property that we're doing the deal on, right? Okay, the residential lease, you can see here's section, this, this section here, like section one is like the, just a lease section. It's only three, three things long. <laughs> you could tell I'm not an attorney because I called them things. There's only three things long here. All right, then the, as you see, this makes me nervous too. So if you're nervous, you don't need to feel, you know, um, you know, unusual or what have you. This is, this is something I've been doing for a long time and it still makes me nervous a little bit. So we've got to kind of just recognize that, you know, it is what it is and just kind of make it something we do in, regardless of some of our fears, right? And what I'm referring to is, is understanding these documents and knowing how to fill them out and knowing how to edit them. And it's okay to edit documents. You don't have to be an attorney. Right? You don't have to be a lawyer to edit documents. Nope, not at all. There's no law like that anywhere on the books. Okay, if there is, I'm sure, surely not aware of it. and no, Neither is anyone else I've ever done business with. <laughs> all right, so uh, rest easy here. You're going to make mistakes, but they're all fixable. That's the wonderful thing about documents is, is they're all editable. They can all be fixed. Even after they've been signed, they can be fixed. That's true. They absolutely can. All right. So we have the residential lease section. And then down here below it, we have the option to purchase section. So you can see we have a lease with an option. So a lease option. All right. This is a lease, a standard lease option agreement. So this is not two separate documents, but it has both the lease and the option in one. It's what I refer to sometimes as a combo agreement. Right. All right. Now, the residential lease section one through three just says blank dollars per month for rent. How much is that? Okay. Lease term. You should know this by visiting with the homeowner. And if you don't, while you're on the phone with the homeowner, that's why you're going over the document with the homeowner. You want to ask them. This is before you send it to them. You want to ask them, you know, hey, what, 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 what did you need monthly? Oh, okay. Okay. That's right. Because I, I missed that earlier in the conversation. So, what is this? Okay. What is the, what is the oh, 36 months is what I'm putting down here, Mr. Homeowner. Does that sound reasonable? We'll, we'll do our best to get this done in 24 or before, but we will put down 36 here just to give us all some 
extra breathing rooms. That makes sense, Mr. Homeowner? Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, wonderful. All right, good. Commencing on, let's do it today. And then we'll end in 36 months. So that means you're going to have to get out a calculator. Fast forward 36 months. Okay. Put the date down there. Maintenance. Tenant buyer will be responsible for all maintenance, repairs, and the management of the property not to exceed blank dollars per individual repair. I may want to edit this and come in here and just delete this whole not to exceed blank dollars per individual repair part. That way it would just read tenant buyer will be responsible for all maintenance repairs and the management of the property period. I might want to do that depending on the deal. Okay. And that's okay. I can do that. You can do that too. Okay. So if you don't edit that and you put a number here, let's say $250, that means the tenant buyer that you put in here that you assign this document to, because see, you're going to assign this document. When you assign this document to your tenant buyer, they would be responsible for all repairs up to $250 per repair. After that, the homeowner would have to kick in. Okay, that's how that's set up. All right, so edit that to make it the way you need it to, to make your deal work, to make your homeowner sign it. That's what I mean. Purchase price, that's, that's the purchase price. Usually we all know that. Option period, again, this is just the same information that we had on number two up here in the lease term, in the option period, the same exact information. Fill in the blanks the same exact way, okay? See, they're just the same, all right? All right, option consideration. This is down payment that you will owe the homeowner, if any at all. If you agreed to give the homeowner, you know, one month's rent non-refundable, okay, then that amount needs to go here, all right? Now, you can see, or whatever the amount is, $3,500, whoo, okay, then put that there, all right? That's what the seller is going to be collecting, $3,500, all right? That is the option to purchase option consideration okay rent that's first month's rent they'll receive first month's rent okay here any additional monies i'm trying to put them down here on this line okay all right so if the rent is a thousand dollars a month and they want first and last and 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 and, and another one for security deposit the seller does let's say they want three months non-refundable and it's a thousand dollars a month rent. So that means here I'm going to put a thousand dollars per month, and then down here I'm going to put those three non-refundable payments that they're getting in addition to the first month's rent. All right, so that would be three thousand down here in this case. Okay. All right, all option consideration, all of this money will be credited to the purchase price. Okay, that's great news. Option consideration due the day the tenant buyer moves in or payable as follows. Okay, so you can see this money is not going to be due until the day that they move in and keys are exchanged. You know, so you can see here, you're not going to have to come up with that money right now. Or you will be able to delineate right here if you made some other type of an arrangement with the homeowner. Okay. If you didn't, just delete that section right there. Just delete this right here if you don't need it, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Rent credit, number seven. Tenant buyer shall be credited. Usually, I put zero here, okay? That's a great selling point with the homeowner. Hey, look, Mr. Homeowner, I'm not even asking for anything being credited monthly, Okay. So it's got a big goose egg right there. Look at me, Mr. Homeowner. I'm doing you a solid right here. Okay. All right. Closing costs. Tenant buyer will pay all reasonable buyer side closing costs. Seller closing costs will be the responsibility of, hopefully, seller. Okay. Just put in seller right there. All right. Right to cancel. The tenant buyer has blank days to cancel. 30 days, 60 days, 10 days. Okay. 
I I won't do anything less than you know a couple weeks usually. All right. Now it says here I have the right to cancel. Um, in order to allow me time to reasonably inspect the above property, both interior and exterior. Now, when I'm talking about me inspecting, I'm talking about my tenant buyer, my assigns. The landlord may not cancel this agreement without my written consent. I am providing a cancellation agreement for you just in case. Okay. Just in case you decide you ever need to cancel. You don't need it unless you need it. Okay. Number 10, attorney's fees. This is pretty standard boilerplate stuff. Whoever loses pays the bill, right? If we're, if there, if there's ever litigation or whatever, shouldn't be, but all right. B prepare his disclaimer. We're not going to throw eggs at the guy who wrote the document because he's not an attorney and he, he didn't put a comma somewhere. That's basically what that means. This is going to help you, okay? Help you uh, stay safe, right? C, inspection. This is very important. This agreement is subject to inspection and approval of the property by the tenant buyer. The tenant buyer shall be permitted to access the above dwelling for the purpose of inspection, showing the property to prospective tenants and or assigns, contractors, partners, and the like. If vacant, the landlord seller agrees to allow and to place a lockbox, which may be provided by you, the tenant buyer, on the property to facilitate buyer's inspections. Okay. In other words, he's agreeing or she's agreeing to allow you to get into the property to, to show it to your tenant buyer. Okay. And they're also agreeing to put a lockbox on it. And that's if the house is vacant. If not, um, then you're going to have to have the homeowner help you show it. They're going to be home because they live there, right? So you're going to want to use the appointment confirmation memo, okay? That has been provided here as well in the module, the appointment confirmation memo. And you're, uh, it's it, maybe not in this module, but in the, 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 the appropriate module about tenant buyers, okay? <laughs> when, when you're getting one to show a house, uh, it's in there. All right. But if you're, if it's a vacant property, then you're going to want to send a lockbox and you can just order one on Amazon and put the address in there and have them send it down there to the homeowner for them to put a key in and put it on the house. Okay. Amazon will ship it right to them and let you pay for it. All right. They're about 25, $30 to do that. Something like that. Okay. Number 11, the undersigned landlord seller hereby acknowledge that they have read this agreement, understand it, agree to it, and been given a copy. They further have been advised to seek legal tax technical counsel, blah, blah. Important disclosure, tenant buyer is the principal, not, not a licensed realtor. Another important disclosure, the tenant buyer has the right to market, assign, or sell their legal interest in this agreement, and then their signature blocks down at the bottom. Once you've gone over this document with the homeowner, you don't have to go over it as deeply as I just did there. Go over the important parts. The important parts will be how to spell their name, the property's address, the rent amount, the purchase price amount, the term, okay, and any down payment, okay. Besides that, maintenance, and then it's about it, really. Get it ready and then send it, put it in your dot loop or DocuSign and send it right over. Have them sign it and you got yourself a deal, okay? Now, when you're going to go show your property, if they're living there, you're going to need the appointment confirmation memo. So go ahead and make sure you know how to find that since you're thinking about that too. But that's, that's a little bit further up the road here, all right? So congratulations on understanding a lease option agreement and congratulations on knowing how to edit one and i want you to practice with that a little bit i want you to fill one out right now and i want you to be the seller and i want your best friend to be the tenant buyer 
and just practice right now. And then I want you to practice uploading it into your document signature program and send it to yourself. Okay. All right. That's your exercise. Okay. I'll see you again in the next module where we're going to be talking about uploading your property deal to the internet and getting tenant buyer prospects. And then we're going to deal with all of that. Okay. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.